My name is Olivia Acevedo, and today is another edition of the West Side Legacy Stories. Would you guys mind introducing your name and age? Uh, my name is Donald Withy, and I was born in 1922, and I guess that makes me 90-something. <laughs> What's your name and age? I'm Blanche Withy, married him, <laughs> <laughs> and I am 93 years old. All right. How long have you guys been living in West Springfield for? For allowing us to live here since 1923 to now without putting me in jail. <laughs> uh, I married a girl who worked for the West Springfield Police Department. And when I, the chief McNamara heard I was going to marry Blanche, he said, and don't think you're going to cop a plea. <laughs> How long have you been living here, Blanche? Oh, I was born here. I was mm -hmm. born in West Springfield. And I've lived here a long, long, long time. But uh, I, I can't beat my husband. He's <laughs> had so many more experiences than mm -hmm. I have. But what I like about West Springfield is that they have a wonderful school system, and I, mm -hmm. that was the thing I looked forward to. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like when you grew up here? Very good, because everybody was cooperative. We had good neighbors, and uh, the school teachers and things, and the librarian, Miss, whatever her name was at the library, I forgot. <laughs> but at the old library, uh, they gave us library cards. We used to get cards at the YMCA and go out to see ball games in Springfield for, and went through the knot hole gang, and oh, wow. things like that. <laughs> so everything was good, and we had a lot of athletes, athletics out at Coliseum. Mm -hmm. And the Springfield Indians gave us hockey sticks and things when we played hockey in the old bed. And, and they let us in the side door like Eddie Short didn't know we were coming in there. <laughs> what was it like for you? Well, mainly I was all agog about going to school. That means I was growing up. And luckily I lived just five houses away from the Park Avenue School in <laughs> West Springfield. So... That was my big thing for mm -hmm. quite a few years. Okay. Um, what do you remember most about your parents? Well, they worked very hard during the Depression and they fed six of us, four boys and two girls in my family, which are wow. all still living. Oh. Brother in Ohio and sisters in Florida. And, and oh, my brother George still lives on Right next to the Dante Club in West Springfield. Oh, wow. <laughs> He's the Italian. <laughs> he calls me up and sings in Italian when he, I know it's on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Young Eddie Short sees him every morning, make right. sure he's okay. What do you remember about your parents? Well, I had a, a young mother. She was 18 when she was married, and, and so it, she was almost like a, a sister, mm -hmm. but she was a lovely, lovely mom. And my dad worked on the railroad, which was very convenient because at that time, West Springfield was a railroad town. Oh, wow. They had a big, what they call a roundhouse, that was at the end of my street. And I used to imagine that I could go down and look at those beautiful big engines. I loved the engines. And so, like I say, it was a nice childhood to be living in West Springfield. <laughs> yeah, but her father was a railroad man. Really? Engineer and fireman. <laughs> and and road, ma road manager. Really? Road foreman, yeah. All right. Um, what is your earliest memory? Earliest memory is going to first grade and got the only good letter I've got in my life. <laughs> And I was, my, Miss Looney said to my mother, because I was going to be a flower in a show, I said, were well, you proud of Donald Gladys? And she said, should I be? And she says, did you give her the letter? And she had given me a letter, and I was cutting it across Murphy Field to go home for lunch, and a kid fell in the pond. Oh, wow. So I pulled him out, and my, while I was being so generous, I dropped the letter in there. It was the only, it turned out to be the only letter I ever got that was praising me in my life. <laughs> What's your earliest memory? I really don't have any. You know? uh, they're all, 
you know, every new thing that happened to me, mm -hmm. I loved it. It was that was life. Oh, that's good. <laughs> um, do you have any siblings? Any what? Siblings. Siblings? Mm -hmm. Yes, I got three brothers and two sisters. What were they like growing up? Same as they are now. They all <laughs> fought in the same war as I did, and my brother was a pilot, and, and he and the President of the United States were shot down in the North Philippine Sea out of the sky a couple times, wow. saved by submarines. So mm -hmm. we're all busy with our own things because we had to peddle newspapers and work the farms and do whatever we can to get by. Mm -hmm. And all the Italians in our neighborhood had farms and they got jobs for us every summer. Oh, that's nice. Yes. Do you have any siblings? Well, I didn't work on a farm. <laughs> I, I just, well, I did a lot of housework. I helped my mother and mm -hmm. father, but it was, uh, it was a nice uh, neighborhood to grow up in because there were kids my age and a lot of parents were the same age and didn't work mm -hmm. like they do nowadays. Both parents work most in most modern families, but in my, in my era, the mom always was home mm -hmm. and the dad always was working. Mm -hmm. So that's mainly what involved all of us. We just had to live like we did. <laughs> okay. What was school like for you? Well, school was good because I had good teachers from for kindergarten right up through the senior school. Oh, good. And the old Cowan school didn't get destroyed by the, the principal of Cowan while we were there, so apparently he didn't throw things so hard. Uh -huh. <laughs> what was it like for you? Oh, he talks about the schools, and of course we're going to get along into uh, old, you know high school eventually. Mm -hmm. But that was to us or to me, junior high was the big deal. You know why that, is that? That was going to be just like all the big kids do. Uh, so I looked forward to going to junior high, mm -hmm. and it, it's the same junior high that is now a. Uh, I think it's for grade school, oh, okay. you know, on mm -hmm. uh, downtown. Do you have any fond memories of junior high? Yes. What were they? I was a, a very lucky girl because I took the sewing class. Mm -hmm. I guess many people wouldn't know what a sewing class is, but we had them in, in junior high school. The teacher knew how to sew. Mm -hmm. Also, she knew how to run a machine. And this was what we were looking forward to. Mm -hmm. So the ch teacher said, well, Blanche, I understand you want to be on the stage. And what do you want to do on the stage? And I said, well, they've told me I'm going to be Jeannie with the light brown hair. Wow. So here's the gown. <laughs> Oh, that my wow. sewing teacher made for me to wear on the stage. Oh. I was, this was in 1938, wow. if you can imagine. <laughs> that was a long time ago. But everybody loved seeing Blanche come onto stage. I didn't sing, of course, I couldn't sing. <laughs> but I came onto stage in this gown, wow. and then they loved it. So I was so happy to have this beautiful teacher Aww. make me a beautiful dress. That's so nice. <laughs> so I kept it all these years. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Long time. <laughs> but she did a good job. That's yeah. the way they were in schools those days. <laughs> they didn't give me that when I was on the stage in the school. Thank Everybody you. participated. Really? All right. Um, growing up, did you have any like best friends? Do I have what? Best friends. Best friends? Mm hmm I did. Who are they? Uh, my cousins, Jimmy Smith. He was with the first of the CIA oh, wow. in London when he was with the embassy. And we had our own team, made our own ball fields and everything. So I guess it wasn't a best friend. We just had everybody was your best friend. That's nice. How about you? Oh, I forgot the question. Oh, um, best like friend. best friends. Oh, my best friend. <laughs> I had two girlfriends. 
Dixie and May. <laughs> and well, they, they both lived near me. And Dixie was a girl who had been born in South. And I didn't, didn't know anybody from South. <laughs> You know, I think it was Alabama. Mm -hmm. So that was a big thrill to have a southern girl <laughs> in, as a friend. And my other girlfriend was the daughter of a cop wow. or, or a policeman, mm -hmm. you know. So we had a good time together. We'd just go to the different things that were happening at the, uh, we had the playground mm -hmm. at the old junior high. It was a nice place to go and play softball or whatever you <laughs> wanted to play. Yeah. And so that was my uh, younger years. I had two nice friends. Nice. Are you still friends with people that from like that time in your life? Well, sad to say, many of my friends have gone passed on. Mm. Uh, but I remember them, you know, I can remember everything about them. That's it's nice. kind of tough to grow old, you know, <laughs> Olivia? It's kind of tough. <laughs> I don't like the options. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. What did you want to be like when you were growing up? I was crazy to go to New York City. Really? Now, which is really strange because I was always a, what you might call a little small town girl, mm -hmm. but I had you know, heard about New York, yeah. and so that was going to be my big deal. I was going to go to New York and be an actress. Wow. <laughs> no way. <laughs> oh, she forgot to mention she was pro Merto. Really? <laughs> no, not until I got in high school. Oh. <laughs> so you didn't like it? Well, um, New York, I, I loved New York, Hi. and it just happens that I have a beautiful daughter who oh. is age 60. I, I can't remember how old she is, <laughs> but she has been brought up in New York City by the man the, uh, who was her father, mm -hmm. that, and that's the guy who's here in the auditorium, and uh, he raised her to attend school, mm -hmm. which she did. She became a therapist. Oh, wow. In other words, she could tell you what's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> and she uh, worked there for many, many years. But luckily, she was able to get away and move to a small town in oh. Massachusetts. <laughs> Just like Ray, What is it? Great Barrington. Great oh, Barrington. Wow. So that's where my daughter lives. That's interesting. That's nice. Um, how did you come to find yourself, like, to work and any careers you've had? Uh, what kind? How did you find yourself and, like, careers you've had in your past? Oh, careers. Mm -hmm. uh, well, right now, believe it or not, I'm an artist. Oh, I'm wow. painting oils. And my, 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 I don't know, I guess you might call it my main thing is I paint on birch bark, bark. If you oh. know what birch bark is, it's the white trees. Mm -hmm. And my daughter brings me from the mountains, she brings me the birch bark, and oh. I paint birds. Oh, that's and nice. And they come out beautifully. I never realized I had <laughs> any, any ability, mm -hmm. but now I can draw beautiful birds oh. and then paint them. That's nice. And I don't sell them, but I give them to my friends. I ask them, what's your favorite bird? Oh, I love the robin. Oh, no, I like the <laughs> cardinal. You know, and so I do all of those. That's nice. And I got a friend in California. She did a beautiful eagle for her. Really? Yeah, because he oh. was 23 years in the Marine Corps. And oh, wow. Yeah. That's nice. Um, for how about you, Donald? How did you find yourself in any of the careers you've had in your past? How did you what? How did you find yourself in careers you've had in your past? Careers. What careers have you had in the past? Mainly, he said, well, a Marine. Really? <laughs> what was that like? All my years are good. Really? 
and and I got an eagle too, as, as well as my friend Marty, <laughs> and hanging in my room. So, and all the all the pictures she did on the birch bark, she leaves some of the bark showing, so it's you know it's on bark, it's, mm -hmm. it's not on paper. And we took pictures of when I computer. We took pictures of all of them. She got a book of every one she ever made. Nice. So they're all, they ended up all over the country. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. Girl in Kansas, Texas, uh -huh. California. Yeah. California. Yeah. Wow, that's nice. Yeah. Well, what? yeah, West Springfield, mine. <laughs> really? <laughs> I gave, I made him not a bald eagle, which oh. is a beautiful bird. Yeah. And I have a picture of him where he's he's soaring, you know, he's, he's uh -huh. truly extended. Oh, and the pieces of bark are almost the size of this right here. Oh, really? Yeah, they're, they're, they're a good size. Wow. So uh, it's just wonderful to be able to put something there that's beautiful and look at it and know that you made it. <laughs> Sounds nice. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so, Donald, what do you remember the most about being in the Marines? Being where? In the Marines. In the Marine Corps? In the Marines. Mm -hmm. Being in the, a member of the Marines. Oh. Well, I started off the day after Pearl Harbor. Oh, wow. And when Roosevelt said, if that's an attack, I took him for his word, and I was working at Gil Barco at the time, Gilbert and Barco, Mass, Red Springfield. Mm -hmm. And so I spent a, I had some education. Mm -hmm. So when I got to Paris Island, I was doing insurance forms, so I was working from 2 in the morning to 11 o'clock at night, and, and I said to the sergeant, I thought you were supposed to be building me up, and, and then he made me sign something, and he said, you're left-handed, sit down here, you're writing a letter home, right-handed. And she was going to tell my mother I didn't get my left hand blown off. Wow. And so I spent five years in the Marine Corps, but I was in Bougainville and Iwo Jima. Oh, nice. He was, he was wounded at Iwo oh, Jima. really? So, yeah. He had to go to, well, you know, he was in the hospital for... I was in the hospital over a year. Wow. But they wanted to amputate, but I kept my head. They went to... Wow. Well, you don't cut a guy's head off because you got a headache. <laughs> That's true. Um, do you guys recall how your family was affected by the Great Depression? About the Great Depression? Mm-hmm. Uh, we didn't realize it was depression until we depression until we read about it, because like I said, people have raised sheep and goats and mm -hmm. and yeah. so on. And, and when they cut them, we had blood soups and meat, and, and they shared with everybody in the neighborhood, oh. the pires and the, all those people, the Bertellis, mm -hmm. everybody down there served and shared. In fact, my brother still lives there, and I still share with him and make sure he's all right every morning. Really, that's nice. How was your family affected by the Great Depression? It was kind of tough. Really? It was kind of tough for us because Dad lost his job. Mm -hmm. and, he, and, you know, if, if you don't have a job, you're not going to eat. Yeah. But uh, my mom, she managed to um, get by. I, she was working her, at the Eastern States Exposition. Mm -hmm. That's where she went to work. She was knitting things that people can wear, you know, mm -hmm. gloves, stockings. Oh, that's nice. It was really tough, but she managed to survive. She was yeah. able to get food on the table. My dad, uh, he, thank goodness, healed up and went back to the railroad. Of course, uh, her family was great hunters, so they ate a lot of venison. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wow. Um, how did World War II affect your family? How we what? How did World War II affect your family? Um, I had a friend who got killed in Bougainville, Sandy Marshwicky from Springfield. And he was a smart aleck. And <laughs> so while we were over in Samoa, he told this shrink that I was having a problem at home. The shrink called me in and says, how are things at home? And I says, where's home? And I'd been overseas a year then. He said, you're sane enough. Dismissed. Really? Wow. So I took that as a badge of I'm sane. <laughs> but maybe not, but no the war the war uh, you're lucky to get through it. 
Yeah, I'm sure. And so the fact that I made it, even though I was badly wounded, I had a lot of friends that didn't come out of there with me. Yeah. That must be tough. Yeah. How did it affect you, Blanche? Well, of course, I was able to go to work mm -hmm. at, by that time. And we weren't, you know, our country wasn't in the war until 1941. So we were kind of lucky mm -hmm. not to have to go through all the bad beginning. Yeah, I'm sure. But anyway, uh, I was working for the telephone company and getting along pretty well. And then I decided, you know, might as well get married. <laughs> so I got married to a That's nice... That's why? I thought you could I, I just have to tell this because it happened to me. You know, he was a nice young man, and uh, I just got married. And that was it. But then I just decided I didn't get along too well with him. Mm -hmm. So I divorced him and then my old boyfriend came by. <laughs> I came home from the war. Oh, wow. <laughs> so how did you two meet? How we met? Mm -hmm. We were both active in the First Congregational Church in West Springfield, and I walked her home after church, and dropped her off on Park Avenue, and went home to Mudville. All right. Um, earlier, Blanche, you were talking about how you were divorced. Yes. And then how you met Donald again. Well, yeah. So can you take us through that? Sure. Uh, we would always go to church together. We'd walk together because he'd come around the corner from his street, and I lived on Park Avenue, so he just had to walk across the street. Mm -hmm. And he became a teacher, and he said, why don't you teach one of the classes, you know, because mm -hmm. they need young people to yeah. take over the classes in church. So we just, you know, got used to each other. Mm -hmm. And then I, I don't know, why did, why did we decide we wanted to get married? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I just figured that maybe this time it would work out, mm -hmm. you know, be better. So Donald and I had a nice wedding. Well, I talked to her parents and I, one day and I told her father and mother, I said, um, eventually, I think I'm going to ask your daughter to marry me, but I don't know when she's going to be ready. Huh. So they tied her to the chair and said she's ready. <laughs> no, I didn't tie her to the chair. <laughs> All right. I didn't get railroad either, even though her father was a railroad man. Oh, really? <laughs> um, Blanche, did you ever have any siblings? Any what? Siblings. Oh, yes, I had three brothers, all younger, oh, so really? I was the big boss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, my brother Benny, then Rob, uh, and Robert, and then Russell, yeah. What was it like growing up with them? Oh, it was kind of tough mm -hmm. because I was really spoiled, I must admit it. You know, my mother, she just spoiled me. I was the only girl, and so my brothers... They had kind of a tough life, oh. <laughs> but anyway, we got along pretty good. We never d had any serious fights or anything. That's good. And um, and as we grew older, we learned to really appreciate each other. Mm -hmm. That's when you really yeah. enjoy your siblings, <laughs> right? <laughs> do you sure. have any? I do. I have a younger brother. Good. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for the both of you, what was your first job? My first job was Gilbert and Barker Manager. No, I worked in wire nailing at nights when I was going to school. And then I worked for uh, F.A. Harris Company. And then I went over to Gilbert and Barker. And after one year, December 7 came along, I joined the Marine Corps. And I came back. And they said, you can't have your job back. You quit your job when you went into the Marine Corps. Oh. And I had two second cousins. So one of them ended up with the CIA in London. Mm -hmm. But back then, they were at the company, and they, they called ExxonMobil down in Stano, New Jersey, corporate New Jersey then. And they called them, and they probably came back from New Jersey and called me upstairs and said, you got your job. Oh, wow. And I worked there 25 years after that. Wow. Nice. Um, what was your first job, Blanche? 
um, I was taken right out of high school. <laughs> uh. No, you know, it was about May, and so uh, all of us were getting ready to leave school. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, the guy came over from the telephone company, and he said, we need some girls up in our office up on the hill. So that's where I went for three years. Huh. That's where I stayed while he was overseas. Mm -hmm. Did you have any jobs after that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's my problem. I just like to change jobs. <laughs> but, okay, I, I worked for the town. I worked in the health department, the school department. The water department? <laughs> no, that and was my mom. Oh. Uh, well, then I, went, so out, so I, so went, so. I went out to Westfield and I worked in their department in the front office. And then I came back because Chief called me. He said, Blanche, I want you to come in and be my sec secretary. So that's where I ended up. Nice. But That's where I got the idea to, for me when he heard I was marrying Blanche, don't try to cop a plea. <laughs> That's what Chief McNamara told me. <laughs> um, Blanche, earlier you were talking about how you were divorced. Um, wasn't divorce back in that time very unusual? Actually, no. I had an aunt who got divorced. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know why it was, but the town, I mean, the whole world was really all crazy. Mm -hmm. You know, people just couldn't get along. Okay, I'm out of here, you know. It, it was it was a tough world to live in because mm -hmm. people did have love for uh, other, you know, their other friends they wanted to marry. And you just didn't know what to do. And, and yeah. part of it, your in-laws wanted you to move to Connecticut and you didn't want to move. Yeah. She didn't That's want to right. leave West Springfield. Really? Yeah. And they were going to move way down in some lower part of Connecticut. Wow. Well, you know, it, it wasn't that we didn't like each other or anything. I appreciated him. He was a very nice young man. He was, and he, he loved me quite a bit. And I know he didn't want the divorce, but I was at the point where I wanted something that was reminding me of my home. Mm -hmm. And he was a guy who had been brought up in Vermont, so we didn't really have yeah. that much in common. Um, <laughs> so we had to split. Yeah. All right. Um, do you two have any children? Yeah. You do? We have that darling daughter, yeah. Donna. Donna. I love her. <laughs> She's so sweet. <laughs> How has being a parent changed you? How uh, what? How has being a parent changed you? A parent? A parent. Her parents? No. How <laughs> did you becoming a parent? How did it change you? It didn't change me at all. How so? No, because I was getting, still getting healed for what I'm not supposed to talk about, <laughs> and you know, I spent a lot of time in the hospital. I came home with crutches and mm -hmm. braces and. And I, mean, I wore for years. I wore a uh, cast on my leg. So <clears throat> getting married, it was pretty good to have somebody helping you out. <laughs> Hate to say it that way, but it was more than that. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, do you have any classic like family stories? I mean, what? Family stories. Family stories. Mm-hmm. Well, just sports and <laughs> athletics and stuff like that. Anything. But we went in the junior city leagues and things and built our own baseball field. And, oh, wow. And Coach Gary Clark tried to take it away from us because in VD Nims had the field, the mm -hmm. Lumber Company at West Springfield. And they said, we, I gave them permission to build it. You use that field for the high school with the permission of those guys. Wow. So, so we can, you can have the field if you act a little more decent. <laughs> Um, so who do you think of as the most, impo most important person in both your lives? Most important person in town? No, anyone in your life. Who like, is like the most, 
important person. They're all pretty much equal because it was a depression. Everybody was leaning on each other. Mm -hmm. So everybody helped everybody. All right. Blanche At least in West Springfield. Norman. Really? Because over in Springfield, there were people going to welfare and everything, and we didn't go on welfare. We helped each other. If you had the, the meat and he had the flowers and he had the food, we mm -hmm. fought. Oh, wow. In fact, uh, the Pyre family across the street raised pigs and things, and <laughs> we'd have pork chops and stuff. We'd go over there and they, we'd watch them hang them up and kill the thing and swing the turkeys, and, and they shared. Wow. They gave us more than we gave them, actually. <laughs> Um, Blanche, who do you think is the most important person in your life? Oh, that's tough. Uh, I would say my mom, but I had I had a, quite a few people that you know I learned to love them, mm -hmm. like family, and it was just what made me grow older and, and to know that I could make friends with other people mm -hmm. and it didn't have to depend on my girlfriends. It's, it's part of growing up actually when you decide to c love a lot of different people. Mm -hmm. It's not just your mom and dad and your aunt and your uncle, but it's the people you work with. You know, it's yeah. people you go to school with and you just have to develop something with these people because you do like them a lot. Mm -hmm. Well, the leadership of the railroad tour used to have parties at all the different hotels. <laughs> and we were invited to them because our dad was a road foreman. Oh, wow. And so we'd be over the Wayside Inn or some inn in Springfield, and they put us a great thing. <laughs> Sounds nice. Um, what was the happiest moment in both of your lives? When our daughter was born. Oh, no. I'm still, I'm still That's happy. my happiest. <laughs> I'm still living my happiest. Really? Why? Why? Because it couldn't get any better. And not that it's impossible to get better, it's because it's the top level now. What's the most important lesson you've learned throughout your life? Do unto others. How's, why? Why was it? Why is it that for you? Well, because now I see Japanese on baseball teams and playing good things, and I have some little feelings about those that people are shooting. Mm -hmm. Before they were just weasels. Now they're people. So I should not listen to FDR. Oh. But Eleanor Roosevelt told me I should be in quarantine anyway, and her son Jimmy said, come on, Don, you know mothers. <laughs> Blanche, what's the most important lesson you've learned in life? Well, to just have a lot of faith in people. I was very, very ill. I'm pra practically ready to die because I had strep throat. And this is in the days before they had the miracle, sh uh, you know, things that they can mm -hmm. give you. So my family doctor came to the house. This is the old days. You know, doctors would call on you. And he had the needles. He had to go into my back and pierce my lungs. Oh, wow. And otherwise, I think I would probably have died. Uh -huh. But he did save my life. So that I owe that to Dr. Bostick. Mm -hmm. He saved my life. That was Dr. <laughs> Bostick, right? Yes. Yeah. He's the one who took care of me when I was in trouble. <laughs> so what's your proudest moment that you've proudest ever had? Proudest moment? I haven't had it yet. No? No, I'm still working to, to get to be a better person. Oh. I guess I say my prayers call. every night, asking tomorrow when I wake up and be a one step better than I was yesterday. That's nice. What about you, Blanche? Do you have any proud moments? Do I have any proud moments? Oh, 
I guess, but I had so many, you know, I yeah. can't remember which is the best to <laughs> tell you about. <laughs> yeah, especially I think having my little girl, and of course I had my son with my first husband, but then to come along and have a little girl, that was so wonderful. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> How would you most like to be remembered? How do I what? How would you like want to be remembered? Be remembered? Mm -hmm. um, I think I, I'd rather not be remembered if I got to go first. Because I'm not ready to, even though the cemetery, I got a place at the cemetery in Agua, and they bury one on top of the other. And they're using up the space now, almost at a connected line. So the guy said, we're running in a room. I said, you call me up and tell me I'm supposed to go now? I'll find another place later <laughs> on. No, I'm not. I don't muse too much about the moment. I live for the moment. Right. Now I'm trying to figure what I'm doing here. <laughs> Blanche, how would you like to be remembered? As somebody who cared about others and I uh, tried to make life a little easier for people around me and, and live with, uh, just as a nice woman uh, with beautiful white hair. <laughs> this is real, you know. This is not dyed. This is real white hair. I used to have brown hair, but now <laughs> no more. <laughs> That's why I had you play genie. <laughs> With the light brown hair, right? Yeah. So, Donald, can you tell us about your time in the military? Well, there's not much to tell. Uh, December 7th came along, I joined the Marine Corps, and came back by the way to hospital, three hospitals. That was five years. Really? And I fought in Bougainville from November 1st to January, and I also fought on Iwo Jima until they carried me out of there. Really? How'd that make you feel? Huh? How'd that make you feel? Well, I convinced the guy that raised the flag on Sarabachi, Colonel Severance from California, and he thought I was a spectator. And just recently, after she started painting on a bark, he's accepted the fact now that we're not just klutzes. <laughs> he's a colonel, he was a lieutenant on the Iwo, and then he, a colonel in three other wars. And, mm -hmm. Colonel David Severance of the United States Marine Corps. And uh, I met a lot of important people in the Marine Corps. Mm -hmm. I got a, a, one of my generals, I introduced John Barcelona in New Jersey to, mm -hmm. and uh, the, the general's grandson came on TWS, together we served on a computer, mm -hmm. and wanted to know who I was because his grandfather had my name in pencil. <laughs> and I, so I just explained to him how I met John, I introduced John Bassalone to him once out in California. And John Bassalone was the highest ranking veteran of the history of America. Wow. He had, a, he had the um, gold medal and then he got the Navy medal because you can't get two. He got one, he was known as Manila uh, John. Mm -hmm. and the bridge was named after him down in Jersey. Yeah. Interesting. And his family up in, on the anniversary of his death, because I was right at his left flank when he got killed. And because they were having an anniversary of his death, I said I was right beside him when he passed. Wow. When he made his final surge, and they liked the way I said it. <laughs> so I hear from the family in New Jersey every year on his anniversary uh, on the huh. computer. Wow. All right. Now, I understand that you have a purple heart. Can you tell us? About well, that. I, I got the Purple Heart um, for Iwo Jima, I guess. I mm -hmm. didn't get one for Bougainville because our Na United States Navy wounded me, and you have to be wounded by an enemy. All right. Can you tell us more about that? Huh? Can you tell us more about that? Like About what? Your Purple Heart. Um, so well, you, you got mean, it fighting. Well, we attacked the airfield. Mm hmm and I thought the way I got wounded, I got wounded by my own troops. Mm -hmm. And so I challenged the government and they gave me a chart of the wounded, the 
the pattern, mm -hmm. so I didn't wound me. The enemy did. Just because I was blowing their airplanes up and they killing their air. Wow. Japanese on the airfield. So I guess now that I think about it, uh, with Pearl Harbor, they attacked Pearl Harbor because they thought our flute was in Pearl Harbor and they thought we were going to do something to them from rumor. Oh. And so they did a form of defense. Mm -hmm. So they didn't, it wasn't a dastardly attack after all. It was a misconception just like now. How about Trump and Russia? It's the same situation. Mm -hmm. Who's guilty of what? See, that's the thing. And now, uh, I think we invited it by being too anxious to have the free all together in one spot. Oh. So that's my opinion. All right. and the Navy doesn't care about me saying those things. Uh, <laughs> uh, so Blanche, while Donald was away fighting, um, I heard you were in the USO. What would you do um, like on a regular basis? Like what, yes. would, what was it like? <laughs> Belonging to the USO was fun because you had all these young guys, you know, that were stationed around town, and uh, a lot of them lived down in East e Eastern States mm -hmm. Exposition Grounds. They lived in the big building I think that's near nearer to the Agawam River, mm -hmm. and so we could not go there. That's where they had their sleeping quarters. But they were invited by all the different schools and whatever to come in their dining, their uh, dancing room or whatever, and invite their girlfriends. Mm -hmm. And of course, all USO all had blanket in invitations to go to these places and dance with these <laughs> guys. So I loved it because mm -hmm. you know the guys were happy. They forgot for a while they were in the war, and then. We we gals were happy too because we had, you know, there weren't many guys or young men on the streets mm -hmm. in, the, in the days of the war. If you ever stop and think about it, you know, you see all your friends and it's just normal mm -hmm. to see a lot of kids, a lot of boys. But when we were here, there was a lot of girls, mm -hmm. but not many boys. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys were in the service. Yeah. Well, I just figured the officer raised the flag on evil, Colonel Severance, David. He was 21 years old when he raised the flag. Wow. See, now he's like 65, 60, yeah. 60 96, I'm sorry, not 65. <laughs> 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 you, you get lost. <laughs> but he fought four wars. Wow. Yeah. Um, so for the both of you, you were talking about um, how you have, you've had like, jobs, how you were working like in a teleoperator. Can you yeah. tell us more about that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, I worked a lot for um, the West Springfield Town Hall, mm -hmm. and I also did a little bit out in Westfield about a year and a half because <laughs> they wanted me. Uh, of course, th that meant that I was a clerk, you know, and I was available, and that was why I got chances to go to Westfield. Mm -hmm. You know, how many people have a, you know, go work in a, an office? Mm -hmm. But that was what happened. So finally I had been through the different <laughs> health department and school department, but I liked best the cops. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, they, they were such a nice bunch when I was there. Now this is a long time ago. This was 1983, I think. So the guys were a little older, you know, and more trained, but they were a darn good force. Mm -hmm. They really knew what they were doing. That was so important. You don't realize how much you need people working mm -hmm. in the police department and how they're taking care of all of us. Mm -hmm. It's, it's just a wonderful feeling to begin with but then we realize that we need their help mm -hmm. and so that's why the guys in the forest they really love the town they love the people <laughs> they do they mm -hmm. really do what was it like for you working in the forest mm -hmm. what was it like for you when you were a part of it I was the uh, 
executive secretary to the <laughs> chief. <laughs> what was that like? Oh, he was a wonderful <laughs> boss. He was just wonderful. And his wife is still alive, and she is a wonderful person. Yeah. But Mac, he just knew how to get along with people. You know, he would have things, really bad things happen to some of his men. Mm -hmm. uh, by that, I mean th they would have fights or they would, you know, yeah. do things they shouldn't do. Well, but, it was a different cop because he was concerned, but not orderly. Mm -hmm. He didn't order people around. He, he, said he took care of the people. Mm -hmm. He was a wonderful guy, Mac. He was a wonderful boss, and he, he was wonderful to all the town. All right. We miss him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. And those new cops remember her. <laughs> yeah, some of the old cops. <laughs> well, some of the new ones. One guy, one guy came on duty the day you retired. Oh, yeah. Capuccini oh, wow. or Capuccini. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Donald, um, did you have any other jobs in your life? Well, I had <coughs> jobs during, uh, before I went into service. Because mm -hmm. I, I was going to college nights. Mm -hmm. And I went to Bay Path and Northeastern University. And, oh, okay. And that's why I got down to Paris Island and I was there a year, mm -hmm. well, January to September, because they had all these people joining, and they didn't have anybody can control it, so I was working day and night, processing insurance papers and everything else. Mm -hmm. and then I went in Bridge Bronze, and I was in four different branches of Bridge Bronze, uh, the Bridge Bronze schools, because they didn't have anybody to handle the paperwork. So I finally said to this gunnery sergeant Harper, I said, I, I gotta get out of this place, you know. I came to join the war, mm -hmm. and they, they shipped me overseas one of one of Bri Bri Bri's outfit to Samoa, mm -hmm. and then I finally they formed the Third Marine Regiment. I was the first one to report there, wow. and that's how I ended up on Bunkerville. Wow! Did you have any other jobs after the war? I came back, and they, I got the CIA to get my job back because oh, they said yeah. I quit. Mm -hmm. But the Smith family got my job back, and oh, they brought nice. Standard Oil Incorporated in New Jersey. Before Exxon Mobil and Mobil, they came in and gave said, so you got your job. And I worked there for 25 years until I retired. Nice. Is there anything that you'd want to share? Anything else that you thought we missed or you want to share with us? Just that I think this is a wonderful idea, whoever thought of it. <laughs> and I would like to see all the others that mm -hmm. are going to be here or have been here. Uh, it's, it's new for me, mm -hmm. you know, I never was on live TV, well, not live, but, you know, <laughs> yeah. the big picture TV, but I, I enjoy it very, very much. All right. And you are a really oh. beautiful <laughs> per person to talk to. Thank you. That's so nice. <laughs> I enjoyed talking to you guys. This was really nice. I'm glad.